Hi, my name is Marco and today I'm going to show you how to match multiple cameras using the new Data Color Spider Checker video and DaVinci Resolve. Matching multiple cameras is an important part of the post-production process, but it can be quite tricky, especially when we only use display referred methods. That means that we grade using our eyes and the display. We don't have any data to rely on, so we just rely on our eyes. That can of course be tricky because our eyes can lie to us, but data can't. This is where the data color spider checker video comes into play. Because using the spider checker video, we have charts to rely on. And those charts don't lie and they help us match multiple cameras easily. First up, we've got our color swatches up here. We have our skin tones on the top and then we have a pattern card, which shows us a very specific pattern using the vector scope in DaVinci Resolve later on. This is of course dedicated to Rec. 709, so it gives us a pretty good starting point to do all of our future grading on. Looking down here, we have our gray gradient chart, which can be used to calibrate the brightness of an image, as well as white balance different cameras, but as always, try to do it on production because that's always better than doing it in post-production. Looking at the other two charts which are included, we have our gray card up here, which can be used for white balancing an image, as well as a focus star. If you are a hybrid shooter and are interested in photo and video as well, these charts can be switched between the photo checker as well as the video checker. So you can switch them out however you want and have just one with you all the time. When matching multiple cameras, always make sure to record the color chart as reflection free as possible because reflections can interfere with the outcome of the picture so make sure it's reflection free. The best way to do this is to move it around a little bit so you can be sure that you have a clean frame in post-production afterwards. Also make sure that you don't touch the color swatches as well as the grayscales because they are very fingerprint sensitive and it can mess with your final outcome. Now let's jump into DaVinci Resolve and I'm going to show you how to calibrate your cameras in the software. First of all, we're going to make sure that we don't have any reflections on our color chart as well as on the grayscale chart under here. That's very important because that can mess with the final outcome. So definitely make sure it's reflection free so we get all the saturation of those colors as well as all the grayscale steps over here. Looking over here in our note tree, we have three nodes in here. First up, we're going to address the white balance and the contrast of the image. Afterwards, we're going to take a look at the hue. And last but not least, we're going to take a look at the saturation of each different color. We're going to start off changing our scopes under here and we don't want to use the parade. We're going to start off in the waveform instead. The waveform is great for dialing in our contrast with the pattern over here. As you can see at the moment, we can't really get our shape visible over here. So we're going to use the power windows to exclude the area we're going to take a look at. So just draw a shape over here and then we're going to toggle it on so we can take a look at only those scales. We can pop out our waveform to take a closer look as well as make it a little bit brighter so we can see what's going on here. We have three different parts over here at the one at the bottom, one at the middle and one at the top. Those are our black, gray and white charts over here. And then we have those small little steps, which are the gray scale under here. We're going to start off in our curves and we want to bring the upper part somewhere between 900 and 1023. The middle part should be around 512 and the lower part should be somewhere between zero and 128. Now that's looking pretty good, but we have a split of RGB on the top, in the middle and a little bit in the bottom as well. That means our white balance is off. For that, we're going to adjust each individual channel. So first up, we're going to start with red and we want to try to align all the colors as good as we can so we have a proper white balance. Now that we have adjusted our white balance as well as our contrast, we can turn off 
or rather delete the power window to get a look at the whole image again. When we turn off our selection mode, we can bypass the whole grid and take a look at the before and after and we see that we have adjusted the white balance as well as the contrast and it's looking pretty good already. But as I've said before, each camera interprets colors differently. So we need to adjust the hue as well as the saturation because they can vary from each camera manufacturer as well as depending on which lens or filters you might use. For that, we're going to switch from the waveform to the vector scope and we want to turn up the brightness once again. Also turn on the two times zoom as well as the skin tone indicator, which gives us a rough interpretation where our skin tones should be. With our hue nodes selected, we can put up our scopes over here. And once again, we want to go to the curves, but this time we're not going to use the first part. We're going to go to the hue versus hue curves. Now we can turn on all the buttons on the bottom right here so we can adjust each color separately. And our aim is now to line up those dots with the targets over here. So we're going to adjust the red, we're going to adjust the yellow, the green, the cyan, as well as the blue, and a little bit on the magenta as well. But now we still aren't in our targets and that's why we need to adjust the saturation for each color individually. As you can see, red is above the target, but magenta is not even at 75% at the moment. So that's what we use the last node here for called saturation. And we want to change the curves. Once again, we want to go to the hue versus set curves here. That basically means that we're going to select a hue and we change the saturation of the set hue. We once again want to turn on all the buttons on the bottom right here. And we start with red, which we want to turn down a little bit. Then the yellow needs to come up the green as well. Cyan as well. Blue is looking pretty good. Small adjustment on here and the magenta needs a little bit of a push as well. And now we are looking very good in our vector scope already. When we turn it off, we can take a look at the picture and it's looking pretty balanced. So we can turn off the whole grade. And as you can see, the picture is now way better balanced than before. Now you know how you can calibrate your cameras using the Data Color Spider Checker video.